So we are out and about on the prowl for some pie mash and liquor. We have come here today to the part of South East London. Some people say it's Ken. It's uh, Nut Nutsley Village in Belvedere. So yeah. We've just been to the gym. Um, some people go for chicken and rice for their protein salts. We go pie mash and liquor. So I think uh, that's the winner. So this is where we've come today. This is Miller's Pie and Mash Shop. It is on Albert Road in Belvedere. This is the second Pies and Pints uh, review. Um, first one, obviously, we've done at Barry's in Custom House. Obviously, me and my brother, who's joined me on the, just to the right-hand side for the first time, um, we stayed a little bit more local this time. And one that I believe my brother, Rob, had been to before, but I never had, surprisingly enough, called Miller's Pine Mash in Belvedere. So, yeah, um, so, again, just to remind everyone, we're going to rate it at 15 in total, five for the food, five marks for the food, five marks for the decor and the overall look, and then five marks for the customer service and the people and the experience and the vibe that we got. So, Rob, uh, introduce yourself a little bit, mate, and then over to yourself on, on the, what you thought of the food initially. Yeah, just for the benefit of those that are not sure who I am, as I say, I'm I'm Rob. I'm Ben's uh, older and better looking brother, <laughs> um, and I'm and I'm also something of a pie mash and liquor connoisseur. I I enjoy frequenting different establishments, and there's been many that I've been to through the years. Some of which are no longer with us, as, as Ben touched on on the, the earlier one. There's been a lot of businesses that have either cease trading completely and um, one one that i'll sort of like mention was one that i went to many many times i'm a west ham fan uh, forgive me for those that are not it is what it is but there was one behind uh, the bobby moore stand at upton park which was called nathan's which sadly is no longer around there's other businesses that in order to survive have had to up sticks and move out of London and go to places like Essex or Kent or Hertfordshire or whatever, where there's a, a big sort of ex London community in order for them to survive. But this, this one here, Miller's uh, is one that's in as just, just to give it a little bit of a, of a plug. So yeah, if yeah. anybody watch, watching, it, that, yeah, if anyone that's watching that, that don't know who they are, where they are, and if they're any, if you are anywhere near Belvedere in Kent, southeast london borders it's it that's that's where to go um we'll obviously get into what we think of it good bad or indifferent down the track but to just to give it a shout out their address is number eight albert road belvedere kent d a 17 5 l j so um and one thing to also to stress is that obviously whatever you see on these recordings are, are ben's opinions my opinions but I would always recommend, even if we ever do a review where we we actually don't think much of it, I would always recommend that you go there yourself and have a little look and see what you think. Don't just take our word for it. Um, have a look because you, you might disagree with us, which is absolutely fine. And, and absolutely. Look, our, our aim on this podcast and show is just a bit of fun because we love Pie and Mash. Fundamentally, we want to keep keep that London tradition going and, you know, we're not out to screw anyone over, but we want to be honest on, you know, you're going to have some good ones, you're going to have some bad ones, like you're doing anything, so. Absolutely. So, Rob, right, yeah, so a little, just a little bit of history on Miller's. I think, like I say, I'd never been there before, but I believe it's been around quite a while. Well, uh, one of the things that that struck me was the, you've obviously, we, you got the, the count of the jump, as, as we call it, and... Just to the left, there was there was a photograph, wasn't there? Uh, an old there was, old yeah. photograph, and I'll, I'll do a little bit of jiggery pokery on the editing, and I'll I'll put it up sort of around about now. There'll be a photograph looking at you, lovely people at home. This is the establishment that Miller's 
had previously which when we got talking to to the girls behind uh, the counter i think they turned around and said they reckoned that this particular establishment was in plumstead or woolwich am i remembering that correctly ben uh, i think so mate but i don't think they were 100 percent sure i think it no was like they weren't a, it, historic photo that they'd come across that said miller's pie and mash mm. but it wasn't necessarily linked to anyone really in the store and i think i said look if anyone's gonna know where it might come from this fella is like you know he's more likely to know than anyone else so uh yeah we'll have to get next time we go we'll do a bit of research and try and give them that info mm. yeah that no, was just quite interesting because they because i think they turned around and said that that particular shop in belvedere had been there for about 20 years or so from memory yeah yeah i think yeah. that's about right i think that's about right but i think Look, I was really, pl- you know, it was about three weeks ago now, wasn't it, Rob? Mm. I think, unfortunately, ordinarily we'd be doing these broadcasts very soon after, if not the day, you know, but unfortunately yeah. uh, a few things have got in the way. But I was really happy to go and visit Miller's early on in this Pies and Pints uh, little venture because I'd heard so many good things about it. So uh, should we just roll into the, the scoring, Rob, and yes, kick off maybe with uh, what your thoughts were on uh, the food itself? Obviously, you know, probably the most important thing. Absolutely. And I, I, I have to say, I mean, obviously, I've, I've been to Miller's a good few times. It's, it's uh, and, and by virtue of that fact, you can probably work out that it's a it's an establishment that I rate because if I, if I didn't I probably would have gone once and that would have been it. Exactly. But, yeah. Um. You know the, the pies were I I I like an, a, the crust the the top of the pie to be when you sort of like you and I'm I'm a I'm a fork and spoon uh kind of guy. <laughs> I know there's some people that that are a knife and fork, but I'm I'm fork and spoon. I and like I think- when I. And I've, oh, <laughs> I think, that, this is this is what happens when you're not a pro. But um, I think I think you would look down on someone that had the knife from the fork, wouldn't you, Rob? You you wouldn't be happy with that. I, I might give him a little sort of a, a disapproving sort of like sideways <laughs> glance, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, if, if you're eating pie and mash with a pair of chopsticks and you're enjoying it, then it, yeah, it might yeah, be yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, sort of like when I sort of cut into the the, the top of the the pie, I, I don't know about you, Ben, but I like to to hear a little bit of a crunch to it. Do you know what I mean? I like, I like a little bit of little bit of the old snap, crackle, and pop to be going on as I'm sort of digging into the old crust at the top. And and I got exactly that. The meat was yeah. was nice and and flavoursome, well seasoned. I thought, and yeah. yeah, it was it was good good um, good effort on the pie yeah the mash the mash was was of a good consistency it was it was plentiful in its portion size you couldn't you couldn't complain that you weren't getting value for money on on that aspect yeah the liquor now the liquor is the one where i i'm again this is purely my opinion yeah i and and you know ben obviously because because you're my younger brother when we were growing up there was a, an establishment near where our um our family are from in southeast london called armaments and yeah. to me m- that is my reference point of any pie yeah. mash and liquor that that's always my my reference point of what a pie what a mash what liquor should look like now yeah. some liquors will be a more deeper green some will be much much lighter almost verging on white almost yeah um this was a this was a more from memory this was a more sort of like greenish um sort of like deep it was not, quite, not, not, it was, not deep was it it wasn't a deep green it was but it was sort of like just off was, do you know what i mean it, yeah it was a bit it was a bit dark if you know what i'm saying mm. it, it looked a bit darker um than and like you say every shop is different and yep. you know your you exactly what you said rob your reference point would probably be your first place you went or where you yep. went a lot growing up and that's what you associate it doesn't mean that one's better or that one's worse it's yep. just sometimes you you know you look and it, it is different so yeah yeah i i agree rob i, I you know in terms of I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. I think the pie was good. It was a little bit burnt, which I like that. Do you know what I mean? I like my yep. pie a little bit well done, shall we say. Uh, the mash was a good portion. I really enjoyed it. Um, 
and uh, but the only thing I would say is that the liquor for me weren't the color that I, you know, it was yeah. a good color. I liked it, but it, you know, different. It, um, it was just brought it down maybe from being a five out of five, which mm. um, for me, if you don't mind, Rob, I'll tell you what the scoring was for me. It was a four out of five on the grub. So that tells you I really enjoyed it, but uh, you know, it wasn't top marks for the mm. food. And and the liquor was well, again in terms of the taste the, the liquor itself was was fine in in that aspect yeah. as I say it's just in in terms of its its aesthetics in terms of of what me personally I, I'm yeah. looking for it it wasn't quite what I normally expect if if you get my meaning yeah. but yeah, that, that being think. said as I say I've been to this establishment many many times and. To be fair, the fact that I go there again, uh, you know, time after time, is is testament to to its what I think of it. So, yeah. um, are we allowed to give half marks, or is it only yeah. sort of like? Well, well, mate, I think we can. I, I think we can definitely give half marks. I mean, I didn't on the last one, but that was the first test pilot, shall we say? So the floor is open to you to, to do whatever you want. I'll, mate. I'll give it. I'll give it a four point five because it's probably. Oh yes, it's, it's probably unfair in some respects, sort of. To, to do the liquor down purely from what my expectations is, but my expectations are what I've got to judge it against. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, like I say, in terms of its flavor, it was absolutely fine. I'm a, I'm a chili vinegar man, as you know, oh, I always yes. a bit, of, bit of pepper, a bit of chili vinegar, um, just to sort of give it a little bit of uh, zing. It is a, oh, like, yeah. a dig into it. It's got to be done, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go 4.5. I can't, I can't really sort of, say too much more than that well that's a good really good start and i think i think maybe for me you know the other two criteria maybe i shouldn't think this way but the other two criteria that i'm going to come on to this is where i thought miller's excelled and therefore i don't want to be too generous on the food and give it a four and a half and a five because otherwise i'm, I'm just peaking too soon on the pies and bites i'm i'm being too generous <laughs> Nah, that's so, all good okay rob well, you obviously like the grub Really yep. enjoyed it. Four and a half. Great score on the Miller's food. Um, so that brings us on to the second criteria, which I'm going to say is the look, you know, the decor, how the place looked. Over to you, Rob. How, how did you think Miller's Pine Mash in Belvedere fared up? Now, as you can see, I've got the uh, the Miller's Pine Mash shop behind me from the outside. Just, just if anyone wants to have a little look, there it is. Um, yeah. The wonders of technology. I've brought it into my into my dining room. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, from the outside, you know, as you can see, it's it's got the the traditional what I would call the traditional colour scheme of most pie and mash shops of, of green and white. Um, yeah. Obviously, as I say, my reference point is is Armand's. They slightly differ because theirs is blue and white is their colour scheme. But, yeah. Um, by and large, I think it, it's generally accepted within the pie mash and liquor fraternity that most shops will have that sort of color scheme, uh, with yeah. green and white. So as you can see, you know, from the outside, it, it stands up to that particular, um, yardstick, but, and, and you mentioned it on your, on your previous one, when you gave, um, Barry's, a, a custom house, which I've still yet to check out. So the, the, you made the comment that you're something of a traditionalist as am i yeah. i i go yeah. into a pie and mash shop and i'm looking I, I i like sort of going into a pie and mash establishment you know marble top table bench yeah. seats that sort of thing yeah and that was where i've got to mark millers down because there's their yeah, seating was sort of like the, the plastic seating and and again it might seem like a really sort of mean thing to mark them down on you are but, mean you're such a mean yeah, I am. Person, like, <laughs> yeah but, but I'm, like i say i'm, I'm looking yeah. for a certain you know i am a traditionalist i know there are some yes. people that would turn around and say no 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 you've got to sort of move with the times and all the rest yeah, yeah. i get but like i say i i've i can only sort of like give my opinion of and course, my man. opinion and is my opinion. all about yeah yeah so, you know, that's that's where it, it did sort of like kind of fall down a little bit in terms of the traditional pie and mash feel. I did like the the, the little nod to the, the, the historical element yeah. of the shop with the, uh, the the photograph that we've referenced, the canvas print. 
Yeah. I mean, they did have marble tables, though, Rob. They did have a marble table. Oh, because I was just looking at my photos before we done the um, we before we done this, and they did have marble tables. Was it marble? I didn't think it oh, was. Yeah, it, it looked like marble to me. I mean, I'm no specialist on stone, but it it looked it looked like marble to me. Okay. So, okay, Matt. So, I think was there anything else you want to talk on on the decor and look the other, before the you other thing the I thought was weird was the fish tank in the corner. I just thought that was like, <laughs> what is that doing there? What I mean, unless it was going to be sort of like full of eels and you were going to sort of like pull out a live eel, chop its head off, chop its, and do yeah. what you got to do, then you know, I, I did think that was you, a little bit. He wasn't Weird. sure what he was doing there. Yeah, it just seemed a little bit out of place. I mean, it was like when you said about Barry's where there was you, you went in there and there was photographs of the Eiffel Tower. It was like, <laughs> that's a bit weird. And, and it was well, the same I'm, thing with the fish tank. Yeah. Well, well, I must admit, I know for sure they haven't got a pie mashup up the top of the Eiffel Tower. So that was definitely not needed in my opinion. No. But, no. you know, that, that being said, I mean... <clears throat> I'll just touch on what I think of the, of the decor myself, yeah, before we both give it the score. Um, I think, like you said, green and white, that's what I associate with a pie and mash up generally. Um, like you say, the blue and white from Armand's, and then we'll come on to the others when we come on to their podcast. But from externally, looks the part. When we walked in, I like the orange tiles on the floor. Yep. Might, you know, I thought it looked fairly traditional, maybe not pie and mash shop, but old school. From memory, I, I had them down as a marble table. I agree, the chairs look like something you'd have at school, so they probably didn't look, uh, you know, the part, shall we say? But I'd say I like the tiles on the walls. They had a few, they had a few sort of pine mash related photos on the wall. So I think, albeit that, in my opinion, it wasn't the best looking pine mash shop I've ever seen in my life. I'd mm -hmm. definitely say it was up there and and did look the part so i think rob I, I, over to you to give your score and then i'll i'll give my score i'm probably gonna go i'm torn between 3.5 and 3 um okay. it's gonna be in that element um i'll, I'll give it a 3.5 okay well um obviously the roles are reversing here slightly because i'm going to give it a four yeah because even though like i say you know, and four out of five in anything is a good is a good score. Mm. I thought it looked the part. Um, and actually, I didn't mind the fish tank. Do you know what I mean? Because I think it's a little bit of little bit of individuality. Yeah, it might look a bit out of place, but at the end of the day, I I, I didn't mind. The, I quite liked it as a bit of a novelty. So uh, I'm going to go four out of, four out of five, and you're going for three and a half. Yep, fair. Happy days. So then come on to the final criteria that we've got, which is the overall experience and the staff and how, how you felt and generally, you know, how the service was. So really important thing in any food establishment, the service. So, Rob, over to you, mate. Again, I, I, I can't really sort of grumble too much about that because we had a chat to the, the people that were working there about, as we said, about the photograph and, and various other bits and pieces. They were very, very accommodating, very chatty, very polite. And I can't fault them for that. Can't knock them for all, all of that aspect of things in terms of the service and, and you know, from the hospitality side of things. Uh, so as far as that's concerned, and, and and one other thing probably to to throw into that as far as um, is concerned is is value for money. I mean, I'm just sort of looking yeah. here. If anyone sort of like is sort of like sitting there and thinking, well, that's that's fine, but what what do they charge? I've got a little thing here that, it, and this is from the internet, and so this may or may not be current, but yeah. they on this menu here from Millers, they've got. Pie and mash three sixty, pie and two mash is four fifty, two pie and one mash is five forty, and double double, which is from memory what we had is six pound forty. Now, I know some people would turn around and say, you know, and it depends upon what your yardstick is, two and two, six pound forty, oh, that's expensive, whatever. Um don't forget, I mean, they've they've got a shop. All right, it's further out, but it's it's in a London borough. It's in the London borough of Bexley, where yeah. I'd imagine sort of like the ground rents and all the rest of it are probably not that 
cheap sort of thing. So, you know, and, and a lot of people, yeah, I mean, a lot of people sort of like will complain about the, the price. But I think what you've got to understand is that if we want, you know, us as pie and mash traditionalists and enthusiasts want businesses to survive at the very least, if not thrive, then you've, you've got yeah. to pay for that. The, the, you know, yeah, you, exactly. they, can't, they can't sort of like sell something at a loss because they'll be gone in a couple of months and we're exactly. going to sit there and complain and say, oh, it's terrible that these pie and mash establishments are closing. It's, it's like, well, exactly. what do you want? There has to be a sort of like a balance. So exactly, uh, right. that does wind me up sometimes where people have a little uh, bit yeah, of a moment. I, I agree. I think that at the end of the day, compare it to any, any other food place, you know, you, if you're getting a one and one, you're getting change out of a fiver. Do, do you know what I mean? So that that can't be bad, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I, as I say, it, some people might turn around and say that that price is very good, and then, but I'm aware that there will be others that will say, "Oh, that's expensive." And like I say, it's like, but these will be the same people that if if a pie and mash shop closes, they'll be, "Oh, it's terrible." This, that, and the other. It's like, well, it's because they they were probably selling the, the stuff at a loss. So last mm. thing, there's a, there's always a balance to be had. Um, I'm, I'm going to go, I, I'm, I'm going to give it a five. I'm actually, I'm actually hey. going to give it five. Because I, I found that the, I think the, the reason why I'm probably going to go a five, I probably could sort of turn around and say, if I wanted to be really picky, I probably could go 4.5. But I, I think the thing that's going to sort of like kind of save it was, like I say, the, the staff, to be honest, I've, I've always found them to be very friendly and, and very accommodating. So I'm going to, I'm going to go five. Well, I'll tell you what, Rob, we, we both agree on that because I actually commented on a Facebook post on the Pine Mash group. And I, I would go so far to say it as that was the best service and the friendliest welcome and people I've ever had in a pie mash shop. I, 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 honestly, I, you know, you go into some of the old school pie mash shops, and we'll come on to them when we review them. But I've had it where there's no there's no crack. There's just I'll have this, I'll have that. I, I, I walked in one not so long ago. The lady's reading the newspaper, and I've popped my nose in, and she, I'm like, "Are you open?" She's like, "Yeah," and I'm thinking. Oh, can I have some pie and mash then? And then literally you got served, she comes on reading her paper, whatever. And that and that's look, if that's the way you want to run your business, that's how to do it. But for me, the stark contrast between that and the Miller's was chalk and cheese. Mm. And I, I you know, I, what I thought was good, everyone working there, there was, you know, what I thought was good is there was quite a few people working. There was probably four or five people milling around. So they were they was all having a chat had the radio on so there was just a bit of an atmosphere obviously with the punters coming in they was you could tell there was a lot of locals that knew them and it just seemed a real friendly place and if you don't mind me saying all the girls behind the counter were pretty pre pleasant on the eye which i think is an added bonus in any establishment so therefore for me millers excelled on the staff and service and they got five out of five for me so, Rob, to like if you just total up your scores and give us the overall scores on the doors for Millers. So, I obviously, as I say, for the food, I've given them a 4.5. Yeah. I have given them a 3.5 for the the overall decor and, and the surroundings. And then as far as the the staff is concerned, the service and general value for money, if you will. Yeah. I can't fault them. I've, I've given them a five. So out of a, a running total of 15, they get 13. Which I, you know, I think is a bloody good score. Um, and that's the same score that I've given them as well. Cause I give them a four plus the four plus the five is 13. Damn. So, there we go. So I think overall, really good score for Millers. Same, same a good bunch. And I'm looking forward to visiting there again in the near future. And I suppose that probably concludes the second edition of, oh, <laughs> of the pie section of Pies and Pints. Um, but after we had, after we had the pies, Rob, we had a little debrief just over the road in a we pub did. called The Fox which I'd driven past before, never went in. And in my opinion, Rob, I thought that was a real great bruiser. Again, actually not spent much time in Belvedere, but having been to the pie mash shop, 
then to the pub, the Fox after. I think mm. what a right, real nice little town, good atmosphere in the pub, people watching the football, nice people behind the bar. And that was an overall nice little find as well and a place I'll be visiting again. Absolutely. Um, just before we sort of go on to that, just, just real quickly, if anyone is interested, as I say, I've already given the address out of Miller's. Um, if anyone needs to know their hours of business, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they are open. They are closed on Mondays. Um, and from Tuesday to Sunday, their opening hours and closing hours are between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, and also, okay. just in case anybody needs it, again, I'm, I'm giving Miller's a bit of a plug here. I'm giving them a real push. Yeah, mate, this um, is what it's all about. Yeah, because I think that this is what we're here for, you know, to try and 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 help this industry along if we can. Yeah. As I say, um, their phone number down here on Google is zero seven eight three four five eight six three seven zero. Yeah, no, real real top place, and that's that's what this uh, podcast is all about. So, what you know, just before we round off, Rob, obviously we, you know, my view is we're not really going to get into the marking criteria of the of the pub. The pint section is literally generally having a pint after and, you know, before we shoot off and discussing, you know, discussing the pie. But I really thought the Fox was a real nice pub, Rob. What, what was your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we went in there straight after the pie and mash that we've we just spoken about at Miller's. It was pretty much across the road. Again, just to sort of, if anyone is interested, their address is 79 Nuxley Road, Belvedere, Kent, DA17 5JU. Um, again, if anyone wants it, their their hours of business, uh, Monday to Sunday, um, well, mon Monday to Friday is between 1 and 11.30 p.m. And then on Saturday uh, is 12 noon to 12 midnight and Sunday is 12 noon to, tw uh, well, 12 noon to 12 midnight as well there. Um, their phone number, if anyone it does need it for any reason, at the Fox, <laughs> 013224335557. So, Mate, um, be, yeah, we went... You'll be getting blokes in trouble that are down the Fox and there's <laughs> a there, there woman will be giving them a bell saying, get your ass home. Yeah, your dinner's ready. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, went in there, it was... Um, it was fairly well packed, wasn't it? You know, they had yeah. uh, Sky Sports playing, you know, the soccer Saturday. It was a Saturday afternoon when we went there. And, you know, there was a nice, nice decor in there. It was it was well sort of like maintained and all the rest yeah. of it. Uh, I thought that, that, again, the staff were very, very friendly and, and you could have yeah. a little bit of chat to them. The locals were were absolutely fine. They sort of yeah. had a little bit of a, a crack and... You know, it was all good, and yeah, it was it was a nice pub. I mean, it's the first time I'd ever been there, to be honest with you. I mean, I've drove past yeah. it many, many times, and uh, but this was the first time I'd actually ventured in, yeah. and yeah, I, I I thought it was a, a very nice, very nice pub to go to. I'd I'd be quite interested to go there again, maybe when it's a little bit quieter and scope it out. Because the one thing we didn't really properly do would would be to have a, a good have a walk around. around. Look yeah. all the nooks and crannies because it was quite busy in there when we went in. Yeah. So it wasn't a good opportunity to do that. But what we yeah. saw of it, I thought it was it was it was well kitted out. It was well maintained, and and as I say, um, I thought value for money was was decent enough, yeah. and and the, the the general atmosphere was was yeah. good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really liked it, and I think the thing that topped it off for me, I don't know why, I just really liked it. It's called the Fox, and had a nice portrait of a fox i know it seems silly but i just looked up on the wall the fox on the wall topped it off for me so you know visiting belvedere pine mass shop the fox over the road i don't think you could go wrong on a saturday afternoon and uh losing a fluke few hours by visiting both of them so i think unless you've got anything else to add rob we'll sign off there yeah Yep, no, everything, uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything off about uh, both the Millers and the Fox. Oh, excuse me. Nice one. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for listening. And, uh, yeah, go and have some pie mash down the Millers sooner rather than later. And if you've uh, if you've enjoyed this particular episode, don't forget to drop a like on it, and and why not subscribe to the channel as well? Um, we're we're sort of like going to be adding little things as and as and when we go, and make sure you hit the bell notification. 